Hey everyone, Mr. Shatter here to welcome you to the land of derivatives. In this video, we're going to use the alternate definition of the derivative to calculate the derivative of a function, point. And also, we're going to recognize the definition of the derivative in the context of certain problems. Let's jump right in. Um, we already looked at one definition of the derivative, but there is another called the alternate, which we're going to consider. And as we move forward, just remember that derivative means slope, okay? This is the definition of the derivative we already looked at. So it's real easy, basically plugging in f of x plus h minus f of x over h and taking the limit as h goes to zero. This gives you the derivative f prime x. Taking the formula from above and plugging in a, some value, some constant value, um, you can find the slope of the, uh, of, the, of the curve exactly at a point. So specifically, you're plugging in the point a into the derivative and you calculate the slope of the curve at the point x equals a. Here's the alternate definition of the derivative. The alternate definition of the derivative is um, basically a different formula. And instead of the limit as x going or h goes to 0, we're going to take the limit as x goes to a, which is very different. Okay? The numerator is going to be f of x minus f of a, and the denominator is going to be x minus a, keeping in mind that x equals a is just some point. Um, and this gives you the derivative evaluated at a. Okay? Let's try an example. Um, this one says differentiate square root x using the alternate definition of the derivative. So let's give it a try. So um, f prime of a is equal to, so f prime of a is equal to, this is the limit as x goes to a of f of x minus f of a. I don't, I don't need to rewrite it. It's right at the top for you. <laughs> I'll just write it with a function. So square root of x minus square root of a all over x minus a. In order to simplify this, I'm going to rationalize the numerator. So let's multiply by the conjugate. So it's square root x plus square root a over square root x plus square root a. All right. So this equals the limit as x goes to a of the numerator is just going to be uh, x minus a. It's kind of like the difference of squares over the product x minus a times square root x plus square root a. And the x minus a's cancel, which is super good for us. So we get the limit as x goes to a of 1 over square root x plus square root a. And now we can use direct substitution. x is actually going to a. So we can just plug an a right in. So this equals 1 over square root a plus square root a, which is just 1 over 2 square root a. So this is the derivative of the square root of x for any value of a. So I could plug any a value in here, any constant, like 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and I could evaluate the derivative, the slope of the curve at x equals a. It's notable to add, if I just take this thing and I plug an x into a, I have the general derivative. So this is the general derivative, f prime x. Okay, so that's the alternate definition of the derivative. It's important to also be able to recognize the definition of the derivative in a problem. So for example, this says the limit as h goes to 0 of the absolute value of x plus h oops, minus the absolute value of x over h. And it's asking me to evaluate this limit at x equals 3. This is just the definition of the derivative. This is just the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. So let's be strategic. If f of x is, is located in this part of the formula, that means that this part of my formula is going to be equal to f of x. But it's actually going to be equal to negative f of x, right? Because the formula has a negative built in. So negative absolute value of x is equal to negative f of x. So therefore, the original function is the absolute value of x. And I'm asking you to calculate the definition of the derivative at 3, which really means I'm asking you to calculate the slope, the derivative, at x equals 3. But I know absolute value is a piecewise function, right? Specifically, right of 0, it's always y equals x. And left of 0, it's always y equals negative x. So I know that the slope everywhere to the left of 0 is negative 1. Slope equals negative 1. And everywhere to the right of 0, the slope is positive 1. So if I'm defined specifically at x equals 3, the slope is positive 1. All right. 